Okay, some people have asked me to recommend a calculator for them. And I know there's a lot of fancy calculators out there, but I uh, am very partial to a kind of calculator known as RPN, uh, Reverse Polish Notation. Sounds funny, I'll tell, talk about it in a minute. Uh, the only calculators I know of that um, uh, use this kind of logic are Hewlett Packard, and these are very much loved by scientists and engineers who actually use it in the field. Um, the first really scientific calculator that came out was the HP 35, Hewlett Packard 35, back in the early 1970s. That was the first year of my teaching. It has a kind of logic that makes entering expressions and using the calculator very, very fluent. I describe it to people as this is an extension to my brain. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of other HP calculators that have been made over the years, and some of them got very, very fancy and very elaborate. And in my mind, that gets away from some of the simplicity that you want in a calculator that you just want to pick up and use immediately for doing a quick calculation. The HP 35S is one that came out a few years ago, which is was designed to go back to a lot of the simplicity of the original HP 35. And uh, I've tried this out. I've recommended it to students. And uh, you can catch on how to use these pretty quickly and uh, do, do problems much more reliably. I'm going to demonstrate that in a minute. But first of all, let me tell you what RPN is all about. The kind of notation that you're familiar with in most calculators is called infix notation. And that's where you have your two numbers that you want to operate on, and you put the operator in between. Okay, now this looks like it's a familiar kind of thing when you're adding or multiplying or something. But if I wanted to do uh, complex uh, operations where I have, uh, like, a take 3 plus 4 and take that result and multiply it by 7 and so forth, I'm going to need to use parentheses to be able to express what it is I want to compute without an ambiguity. And so entering this into a calculator. Uh, has that problem. There was a logician uh, in Poland. His name was this, and I'm not even going to try to say it. That L has a weird little mark on it. It's not in the English alphabet, and I don't even want to take a guess on how you pronounce that. Uh, fortunately, it, it was not known as this kind of notation. It became known as Polish notation. Also, it's known as prefix notation. Prefix notation is a parenthesis-free notation system. You can write mathematical expressions as complicated as you like, and you never need parentheses. Um, what you do is you put down the operator, then you put down the numbers the operator operates on. So you have plus, and as soon as you say plus, you know that it needs two numbers. So it looks for the next two numbers in the list, and it's going to take those numbers and add them. Okay, there's a variation on this, which is reverse Polish. It has the same virtues as Polish notation in that it is a parenthesis-free notation system. But this actually comes a little closer to what you're familiar with uh, doing operations. Here you put down the numbers you want to operate on, and then you tell what you want to do to those numbers by putting the operator after the two numbers. It's called postfix notation. Let's look at an example of this. Say I take 2 plus 3 equals. Why did I have to write a symbol here, equals? Well, if you write down the 2 and then a plus and then a 3, you might write down other things. And I have to wait and see, well, is he going to enter anything else? When do I get to do my computation? And so the equals is like a terminating symbol that says, all right, the expression is finished. Now crank out an answer. But if you go back earlier in school, you used to write it like this, 2 and 3, and then add. And think of the operator like a verb that says, here's my 2, here's my 3, what do I want to do with them? I want to add, and you write down 5. So if I write down the number, write down the second number, and then say what I want to do, that is the model for using this calculator. Now, let's try it out. 
Okay, let's try this problem. What we want to do is evaluate this as a number, and I tried to add a lot of complexity into it. So, uh, if you were to try this with a regular algebraic calculator and have to keep track of parentheses and things, I think you'd find it a bit of a challenge. In fact, if you have a scientific calculator, um, I challenge you to try this now and pause the video and see what your answer is and compare it to what we get. Okay? Now I'm going to use this little calculator here because uh, if you don't have an HP um, with an RPN notation, this is a calculator that will switch between algebraic logic, which is the kind with infix notation, and RPN uh, logic. And so notice it has an equal sign here. And if I go up here to option and general, and there's RPN. So I'll select RPN. And then notice the equal sign changed to an enter. This is now an RPN calculator. So I'm just going to launch in and do this the way I would do it myself. And normally you start at the inside and work out. I'm going to evaluate the numerator and then let that float, do the denominator, and then divide. Okay? So remember, we get our numbers that we want, and then we do the operation. Okay? So let's start with here, 3, enter. Oh, yes. i got to tell you one more thing. Uh, notice that what we see here is one window, and when I say enter, what it's really doing is it's copying it to like a secondary window that's hidden. In fact, there's a stack of these windows. Now, in the regular handheld HP calculators, there's three additional windows here in the stack. So they're, they're labeled X, Y, Z, and T for the uh, HP calculators. This particular calculator, I think, has about 15 um, layers in the stack. So it allows you to float more uh, intermediate results. You have to be a little bit careful. This is about as complex as you want to go on an HP calculator, which if you don't want to store any intermediate results in memory. There is a store function, by the way, so like store and recall on the HP calculator. So if you get into a too complicated situation, you can stash partial results there. But most of the time, you can get away with without ever having to do that. OK, let's continue. So I said 3, and I said enter. Now I'm going to put a 5. So the 3 has been copied up there, and here's the 5. What do I want to do with those? I want to take x to the 8th power. In other words, 3 to the 5th power. And if you work it out, that is 3 to the 5th power. Then say 2 times. That's this. Now I want to let that float while I compute this. 13 times 6 to the 4th. So I go 6, enter, 4, raise it to that power, 13 times. Now, I have this result, and I have a previous result that was floating, so I say plus. That computed all of this. Now I hit square root. Then I put in a 3 and multiply. So this entire term has now been evaluated. Now let's work out 7 cubed. 7, enter, 3, raise it to that power, and add that on. Okay, that's our numerator. Now, let's just let that float. And then let's do our denominator. Again, I'm going to start from the inside and work out. So start with 3 times 17. 3, enter, 17 times. And then 7, we add on. And then 5, we multiply. And 2, we multiply. Then take the square root. Now we've done our denominator. And now I say, I have my numerator that's been floating. By the way, let's check to see it's still there. This little key says x to y. And so this will swap back and forth between the x and y registers. So let's check what's up there. There's our 737, and here's our 24. That's our numerator and our denominator. Divide. That's our answer. 30.6427, whatever. And it continues on. Okay. Uh, try that using any other calculator and just see how difficult it is. If you have the kind where you have to use parentheses to keep track of things. They do have um, calculators these days that will handle this. Just type it in as you see it. But one of the big advantages of using an RPM calculator is it's very fluent to use this just like you're thinking about it in your head. That's why I call it an extension to my brain. If I were doing this by hand, I would do these little pieces, take the square root, triple it, add it to this, and then let that Maybe write that down somewhere, compute this, and then divide. So it's doing it the way a 
a person would do it uh, by hand. So uh, I think this is a very excellent kind of calculator to get. And if you uh, get fluent with using this Calc 98, you might want to invest in a, in a real uh, handheld calculator using RPN notation.